It's time for what is now becoming our annual Halloween celebration with Marvel Zombies Volume 2. Welcome to the Complete Story Series, where we take trade paperbacks and single issues and we break them down into digestible bites to help you understand. Then we read it dramatically back to you. All alterations to the panel's text and images are to prevent copyright problems, and all art is owned by its respective companies. Don't forget, if you want to support this great industry by using our recaps to help you pick your books, make sure you buy them online or at your local comic book store. On Earth, an unknown virus arrived and it turned everyone into zombies. Zombies that only thought of their hunger for human flesh and they gained horrible impulses to kill everyone. But in a world with superheroes, you get superpowered zombies and they proceeded to eat everyone on Earth. And then Galactus came, so they ate him too. Granted, now with the power cosmic, the zombies that were once superheroes, Spider-Man, Giant Man, Wolverine, Hulk, Luke Cage, and Iron Man all left the planet in search of more food. It has now been decades since the Marvel zombies left Earth on an intergalactic journey, and they stand at the edge of the galaxy with new friends, and every living thing in the universe has been eaten. Giant Man turns to his zombie brothers and he tells them, this is it. We ate everything. And Thanos tells everyone, This is Hulk's fault! He eats twice as much! So Hulk hits Thanos' zombie's head so hard that it explodes into pus and guts. Giant Man then turns to the other zombies. We ate everything in this universe, so it's time for us to explore the multiverse. And in order to do that, we'll need to go to Reed's teleporter back on Earth. It's time to go home. But back on Earth, there are survivors. We find this out as a young boy finds the head of Hawkeye, left there to rot for decades. He begs the young boy to save him, bring him elsewhere. He won't bite, he promises. You see, when the zombies were eating all of Earth, a few survivors were on Asteroid M, and once they deemed the Earth safe to live again, they went home. Being the only surviving leader, Black Panther was placed in charge of what would now become known as New Wakanda. He was also joined by Janet Van Dyne, a zombie that isn't hungry at all, because as Black Panther, Forge, and their scientist Reynolds have found, the zombies eventually just aren't hungry anymore, and they go back to being the way they were before they turned into a zombie. As proof, Janet brings the head of Hawkeye that Black Panther's son just found. They're interrupting a heavy debate as to what should be done about the children of the community, the Acolytes, because the children are starting a problem, and soon Forge is worried that they'll overrun the community. But now the discovered head of Hawkeye is a bigger concern, and Forge brings it to Reynolds for experimentation. They discover that Hawkeye is in fact normalish again. Well, as normal as someone could be when they've been separated from their body for over 50 years and buried in rubble. With knowledge that it is now confirmed that the zombies can turn back to normal, Black Panther goes to bed for the evening, when suddenly an assassin breaks into his bedchambers and stabs him in the stomach while he tries to sleep. He kicks the assassin over, and Janet runs in to protect him seconds too late because he's already bleeding out on the floor. Realizing that there's no other options, she bites him, spreading the zombie disease. Then. With her hunger returning, she gets up and she tries to dive on Black Panther's wife. But he gets up and he grabs her. No, help me eat the assassin, Wasp. They munch on the assassin and then they regain their sanity, which happens right after they feast on somebody. Wasp and Black Panther lock themselves up until the pain of hunger can pass. All the while, the Marvel superhero zombies are growing closer. With the leader of New Wakanda locked up, the leader of the Acolytes, Cortez, takes this chance to convince everyone that they need to follow him now. He can help them repopulate a new Earth, and they can't be following a zombie. A monster should not be ruling them. He then starts to get people together to go kill their old zombie leader. So Forge, Reynolds, and Hawkeye all let them out, and they try to smuggle Black Panther and Janet out of New Wakanda. But as they make to the exit, they're confronted by Cortez. But this internal struggle is already at an end. Because the Marvel zombies have returned. Hulk lands first and he grabs a human and begins munching. While Giant Man realizes these humans were left behind. And they can turn them into a breeding farm. He can repopulate the humans just so that they can eat them. 
He then grabs Hulk, holding him back, telling him to stop. If Hulk eats them all now, they won't be able to turn them into a breeding camp. He won't be able to breed humans for feasting. This is too much for Spider-Man, and he shoots a blast of power cosmic at Giant Man. They haven't eaten in so long that Spider-Man is starting to come to his senses. And this isn't what they do. They were superheroes. And now Giant Man is coming up with ways to breed humans? Missing half his head and brain doesn't matter because Giant Man is a zombie and he orders the other zombies to kill this twit. Spider-Man must die. I'm tired of his jokes. But Spider-Man isn't alone as Luke Cage is coming to his senses as well and he joins up with Spider-Man. Zombies and humans begin to battle it out while Reynolds is looking for a plan and his answer is to turn on the force field, one that not even the zombies can get through. He turns it on cutting Luke Cage in half and taking off the leg of Giant Man. Seems like it was a good idea, except that they also trapped Gladiator inside of the force field. Spider-Man tries to talk Gladiator down, but you can't talk down a man that once commanded the Shi'ar. Gladiator punches his fist through Black Panther's chest and then he tears Spider-Man in half. Wasp tried to tag him with her wasp stingers, but they just didn't do anything to him. Everything seemed doomed until someone stomped on Gladiator's head using some of Iron Man's old armor. Using it as a distraction, Spider-Man and Luke Cage both blasted Gladiator with the power cosmic killing him by destroying his head. The man in the Iron Man armor takes his helmet off and reveals to Iron Man that it was Forge. He raided Stark Industries and improved on all of the armor. Oh, and he made this force field. They won't be getting in here anytime soon. So Giant Man turns to his fellow zombies. Whatever, we didn't come here for this. Let's go for the reason we're here. They then leave the humans there and they take off for the Baxter building. Forge takes all of the zombies inside, where he staples Spider-Man's body back together, gives Luke Cage some new legs, reattaches Wasp's head, and they tie down Bruce Banner to keep him from changing back into the Hulk. Cortez then walks in, demanding Forge hand over all of the zombies so that he can kill them. Forge refuses. They just saved mankind, and they aren't trying to eat anyone right now, so why are you trying to mess with them? So Cortez begrudgingly leaves them, and Black Panther turns to Spider-Man. Why did they come back, Spider-Man? He explains that they came for food. It's what they're always looking for. But their plan was to go to the Baxter building and get the multidimensional teleporter. Forge just laughs at that, though, and tells everyone to follow him. They'll get a kick out of this. Apparently, he went to the Baxter building years ago and got the multidimensional teleporter. He just can't get it working. But here it is. And as he's explaining that, Giant Man figures it out for himself back at the Baxter building. And he tells his fellow zombies, it's time for them to go back to the last bastion of humanity. The zombies all return to the force field wall to find Black Panther and all of the other zombies inside waiting for them. What is this? Giant Man asks, and Black Panther tells him, we have a deal for you. We'll let you use the multidimensional teleporter if you promise not to harm anyone and just leave. Giant Man and Iron Man are in shock. Okay, deal. But as the force field lowers, they charge out ready to fight and Reynolds turns on the force field, locking everyone outside of the area. This ends now, Black Panther shouts as they begin fighting it out. Iron Man did manage to get inside though, and he goes right for the control room. But it's there that he finds quite a few people standing between him and the room. Everything seems to be going perfectly, except that they had Bruce Banner unconscious for the first attack. And he's now gotten himself free, and he's hungry. Meanwhile, back outside, Giant Man squashes Wasp between his hands and Hawkeye opens fire on Giant Man only to realize that that was pointless. He shoots arrows and Giant Man is huge. Be my friend? He asks him. Back with Bruce and Reynolds, he tackles Reynolds and he pushes him into the control panel which lowers the force field. Seeing their chance, the Marvel zombies begin entering the last stronghold of the humans and Giant Man reaches out grabbing Black Panther's wife. He raises her to his mouth and prepares to take her head off. When he stops, he turns to his zombie brothers and he tells them, the hunger's gone. One by one, the zombies all lose their hunger and Giant Man turns to everyone. Truce? Oh, hell no, Cortez shouts. You killed everything in the entire universe. You must pay for your crimes. Giant Man tells him that the memory of their actions is punishment enough. Not for me, it isn't. I'm gonna make you pay, Giant Man, Cortez shouts at him. But Forge stops him. You can't hurt them. They don't feel pain. Plus, do you think they'd let you execute them? Before they can do anything else though, Hulk bursts through the wall and he's hungry. Everyone jumps in trying to stop the Hulk, but he's the Hulk and he will not be stopped until his hunger is satisfied. He destroys half the zombies while they try to convince him to stop and all it comes down to is they need to stop Hulk's hunger. So Reynolds sacrifices himself, 
Without Wasp, he has no reason to live. Hulk eats him and reverts back to Bruce Banner, where all of the power cosmic zombies blast him in the head, killing him once and for all. And that's it. The zombies help the humans rebuild, and as they dig through the rubble, they find the head of Wasp. She survived. After three weeks have passed, Giant Man spent his time rebuilding the multidimensional teleporter. The goal was to give the humans a better world to live on, and once it's complete, he calls a meeting of all of the zombies. But that's when they find out the reason Forge couldn't repair the teleporter. Cortez didn't want him to. He likes this world, a small batch of humans that he can control. He's the one that arranged the assassin to kill Black Panther. He also killed Black Panther's son all of those years ago, and he's been trying to remove Black Panther's regime. And with that, he flips the switch, teleporting the zombies out of this world and into another. Forge runs in asking Cortez, what did he do? And Cortez knocks him out. They're gone for good. There's someone else's problem now. <laughs> and that is the story of Marvel Zombies 2. I hope you enjoyed this, and don't forget if you want to read more of them, there's also Marvel Zombies 3, 4, and 5. They're all different stories dubbed exactly that, 3, 4, and 5. So, this is the complete story of Marvel Zombies 2. Personally, while I'm not a huge fan of the Marvel Zombies stories, the fact that they're so crazy is something that I do enjoy, and I hope you enjoyed this one. Let me know in the comments down below if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time right here.